Hello, welcome to, I know it's backwards, <laughs> Trust Life with Louise Hay. I really love these little tidbits and this time that I get to spend with you, no matter who's here, when's here, or who's here and when, because I'm talking to myself, actually. <laughs> Everything I share with you, I'm actually looking in the mirror, and I'm literally looking in the mirror at the moment and talking to myself and balancing myself and reinforcing myself and teaching myself. This is how we can actually reparent ourselves. We can rewrite our history. Because when we start talking to ourselves, our memory is actually a very malleable thing. And so if our memory is really malleable, I know um, when police officers are presenting evidence in court, you know how if you've ever had it, if, ever, if you have ever had any interactions with police officers, and I've had a few because I've been a foster parent for many years, so I haven't always done things myself that, but I've had lots of police officers in my home. There were times when we were on first name basis because people were in chaos and they needed the boundaries and they needed the help and support of the whole community. So as a police officer is involved in, in an investigation, he must take notes by hand. You know, they flip open their little black book and when they are in court, that's really all that they can refer to. At least it was when I was practicing with them. That's really all that they can refer to because their handwritten notes at that time are their perceptions at that time and their memories at that time. But if they had to simply cast their mind back to that time, our, our minds and however many times we process things actually and talk about things, we will actually change the memories. That's a known fact in science. Go Google that one. <laughs> that memory is malleable. And so if memory is malleable, and we have a way of releasing the energy and the emotions attached to memory, then we can keep the memory, but we aren't run with by the emotions and the um, attachments, the energetic attachments that hold us in a certain vibration. Some of the different modalities that I use, I'm just finishing my training now with an FJ triple T. That's the acronym for it. It means finding joy, trauma treatment technique. And it's an incredibly wonderful, soft, gentle, kind process that helps us to visit those memories without having to talk about them, without having to verbalize about them, but allows our bodies and our minds to just bring images in and integrate them and release the energy around the memory. And so the memories do stay, but the energy and the, what, the, what the memories have us now reactively doing becomes released and then we have more choice in how we want to manage our lives and how we want to to choose energies and so this is what um, Louise talks about today and you know if, if you've seen the title well you probably haven't yet because we're still on this may sound really really out there and right now our world is in a lot of energy <laughs> It's a lot of op opposing energies. There's a lot of divisiveness. There's a lot of dividedness in people. We all want the same thing. We all want peace and joy and happiness and health. We all want that. And so as we each school our thoughts, we can create that. So she says, I have the power to change my thoughts and the world. Hmm. Power. I'm going to read that again. And as you read that, as you hear that, that title, listen to what resonates behind you. Because those are your tapping targets. Those are your tapping things that go, yeah, but, I, but what about this? What, what about this? Even though I'm feeling this, I am a beautiful, wonderful person and I'm entitled to my feelings. So as we start tapping and moving that energy, we release that, the, the memories, we, we release the energy that's attached to the memory. So... I'll quit talking, let Louise talk. I have the power to change my thoughts and the world. Each, if each one of us could, would practice getting in touch with the treasures within us on a daily basis, we could literally change the world. People living the truth change the world. For the truth of our being is that we are filled with unconditional love. We are filled with incredible joy. We are filled with serene peace. We are connected to infinite wisdom. What we need to do is to know it 
and live it. Today, we are mentally preparing for tomorrow. The thoughts we think, the words we speak, the beliefs we accept shape our tomorrows. Every morning, stand in front of a mirror and affirm to yourself, I am filled with unconditional love and I express it today. I am filled with joy and I express it today. I am filled with peace and I share it today. I am filled with infinite wisdom and I practice it today. And this is the truth about me. So how that works and how, that, how we can do that, how we can actually choose our thoughts and change the world is very, very cool because, and I can thank my horse partners for this, they read energy. This is how they react to us and they can feel our energy and they can feel the intention of our thoughts, like literally the intention of our thoughts in the moment as we feel them because it comes out as a vibration. I'm going to tell you a little story. So I have a bunch of horses and I teach people all the time. And we were, we were um, in a camp that was going to take horses up into the mountains. And if I'm going to take riders up into the mountains to ride, there's no fences there. There's bears there. There's cougars there. <laughs> there's all kinds of things. So I need my riders to be very aware of themselves. I need them to be very aware of their horses so that they get the feeling, <clears throat> they get a sensation of anything out there that could disrupt our ride. And so I teach them a process of heart breathing. So I'm going to breathe out to my horse. I'm going to breathe out love and gratitude and kindness to my horse. And as I breathe in, I'm going to imagine them breathing that same thing back to me. And so we set up this cycle of love going back and forth and back and forth. We call it heart breathing. So I was taking two riders out to a pen to catch horses. And there were five horses in the field. And I knew that one of them was lately giving us just a bit of a runaround to catch her. And sometimes a lot of a runaround. I would take, sometimes it was taking me 20 minutes to catch rain. And so as we were approaching the, fan, the, the um, pen, and this is a 300 by 300 foot pen, so there's a lot of space for this horse to be saying, nah, I'm not into that today. <laughs> so as we approached the pen, one of my riders was, was to be catching Rain, and one of my riders was to be, to be catching Greta. And I wasn't catching anybody. So as we approached, I said to both of them, remember your heart breathing, because I had just taught them that concept. We stepped into the pen and we spread out and they each looked at the horse that they were looking, that they, that was, they were, that was, that they were to catch. And those horses were quite a ways away. Rain walked directly to the rider that was to catch her. Greta walked directly to the rider that was to catch her and the other three mares walked over to me. <laughs> and I just sat there and went, well, this is pretty miraculous. <laughs> but we had set it up by our intention and we had set it up by our thoughts. And those horses read into it and they felt the invitation of love and walked directly over to us. So our thoughts and our intentions radiate out into others. And especially in this divisive world where we all have the same desire, we all desire love and happiness and health in our bodies. As we radiate love out into them, no matter what their choices are, as we radiate our love and our appreciation of the universe, here's my hollow bone. It all comes from the universe. It comes through us, which is the hollow bone and radiates out. As we radiate that, as we choose our thoughts and choose love and choose kindness and choose forgiveness, we do resonate and we feel into what is there that's blocking it. Oh, I'm really sad. I'm really angry about this. This is where the tapping comes in. Even though I'm really angry about whatever it is, I am willing to step into loving myself, even though whatever happened made me really angry and really feel into what that anger is. Feel it, receive it, feel it, feel it, feel it, tap. It's that vibration. As we feel it and receive it and tap, it releases and dissipates. And then we rewrite the energetic blueprint of that memory. And so we can come from a place of a lot of um, abuse, alcoholism, addictions, that's my background. But we, could, we can rewrite that. We can rewrite the emotional attachment we have to those memories by releasing them. And then as we have released those for our, ourself, our, our energy radiates into other people and we give them the support 
to do the same for themselves. And this is how we change the world. Because as we change the piece, as we change ourself, we change the energy in front of us that we radiate. And then those people resonate and radiate on a higher level. And then they change somebody else. And then they radiate onto somebody else. And together, we can bring peace and joy and happiness into this world, even in this space of not so -ness. I love you. Namaste. I'll see you again.